Hi, and here's the video I promised on the truth of what really happened when Robinhood stopped buy side trades on GameStop and other meme stocks, but still let people sell. Was it avoidable or were they forced to trigger the 85% drop in GameStop share price from $325 the day before the trade ban to just $50, which is where it is today. Now, obviously the people involved in the 30 class action lawsuits against Robinhood, of which there's now tens of thousands involved, believe they could and should have done things differently. And also that what they did do amounted to market manipulation. But Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenney has been on a PR blitz, I'm sure you've seen, saying the hands were tied and there's nothing they could have done differently. The story goes that the NSCC called at 3.30 in the morning demanding Robinhood deposit $3 billion or that they stopped trading in GameStop and other shares. And well, this is what Elon had to say about that and Vlad's response. Basically, well, I mean, I, I guess like it's based on growth. What everyone wants to know, what everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it's like, it seems weird that you'd get a sudden $10 billion demand, you know, three billion, three billion. Three in the morning. Sorry, how much? Yeah. It was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, so three billion yeah, around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere. Um, and what percentage I wouldn't, of I wouldn't impute. I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this, and you know, they've been, they've been, uh, they worked with us to um, to actually lower it. So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't, I don't have the full context about, um, you know, what was, what was going on in what's going on in the, in the NSCC to make these calculations. But um, yeah, essentially, is anyone, is large anyone holding you hostage right now? Uh, <laughs> no, no, Blake I'm twice. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for asking. Robin Hood then followed that up with this statement to be clear. This was a risk management decision and was not made on the direction of the market makers we route to. We're beginning to open up trading for some of these securities in a responsible manner. So who are these market makers? Who is the NSCC? And was there something shady going on? Now, before we get into that, here's a really important fact. While Robinhood restricted trading for days, other brokers didn't. Webull lifted restrictions by 2.40 p.m. on the same day. Public issued a statement saying our clearing firm Apex Holdings has decided to halt the buying of GME and AMC. We disagree with this decision and are working hard for our members to resolve this. And they actually did also starting trading again by 2.45 p.m. Other brokers like Charles Schwab and Ameritrade never stopped trading at all. They just said no trading on margin, which basically means you have to pay cash for the shares, which is fair enough given the circumstances. And in fact, the CEO of Schwab, Walt Benninger, made a point on this saying, unlike some other brokerage firms, neither Charles Schwab and company nor TD Ameritrade halted buying any stocks or clients selling any stocks they own. So was this really a liquidity problem for Robin Hood, even though Vlad told CNBC there was no liquidity problem? No, no, there, there was no li liquidity problem. And to be clear, this was done preemptively. Or was this the result of decisions Robinhood made at the expense of their own customers? And you know what? That all depends on how you define a customer. Because if it's those paying you the money, then it's not the users. Because the users are trading for free. So who actually is paying Robinhood? To answer that question, we need to go to this guy, Bernie Madoff or Bernie Madoff, if you prefer to say it that way. Yes, the same Bernie Madoff in prison for the largest financial fraud in US history. He ended up getting charged for defrauding investors over $64 billion in his massive Ponzi scheme. But before he started taking people's money in his investment company, he set up Madoff Investment Securities. And he used automated trading to make it the largest market maker on NASDAQ and the sixth largest on Wall Street. There, he pioneered a practice called Payment for Order Flow where he would buy trades from brokers and then package them up and complete the trades in bulk at a better price. So basically he was making money at the expense of the original traders. And in most cases, people weren't even aware that trades were being sold. So plenty of people saw this as unethical and some called it the dirty little secret of trading, others called it legal kickbacks. And as high frequency trading has grown at the same time, so has payment for order flow because it's really tempting for a broker to be able to go in and make easy money at the expense of their own users. But many brokers choose not to do it out of principle or to make it just a small part of their revenues. So for example, when most brokers went to zero commission trades back in 2019, Fidelity's Kathleen Murphy said they would not take payment for order flow. 
Charles Schwab also said their payment for order flow was less than 10% of their revenues and over half of it was coming from more ethical practices like just making interest from customer accounts. So how about Robin Hood? In this article, here's how Robin Hood is raking in record cash on customer trades despite making it free. CNBC show that Robinhood is making $180 million a quarter now from its retail investors through the hidden cost of payment for order flow. This is now Robinhood's biggest revenue source, and it goes on to say Robinhood gets the highest rate per trade for order flow in the industry. So basically, Robinhood is giving a much worse rate to its investors than anyone else in order to make a bigger cut. Here's a quote from Tim Welsh, who's the CEO of wealth management firm Nexus Strategy. It's a huge conflict of interest for these free trading platforms, Welsh says. The Citadels, the active traders of the world, know that Robinhood has much more unsophisticated traders so they can make money on them. Now, if Robinhood was being honest about this, that would be one thing. But they say it's commission-free trading, and then they shift the pricing to take a hidden cut instead. It's like a real estate agent saying they won't charge you a commission to sell your house. Then they organize a sale, tell you they have a buyer at 10% less than the buy price and pocket the 10% hidden cut for themselves without ever telling you. And by the way, this isn't just unethical, it's illegal. In December, the SEC fined Robinhood $65 million for failing to disclose to customers how much money it was making from payment for order flow. And in SEC's words, this caused customers to pay higher prices to execute trades even though Robinhood claimed its execution quality matched or beat that of its competitors. So basically they lied. Following a month long probe, the SEC said it found that Robinhood deprived customers of $34.1 million, even after taking into account the customer savings from not paying commission to Robinhood. And that was at a time when payment for order flow was generating just $69 million a year for Robinhood. Now it's 10 times that. Okay, so Robinhood is using a Bernie Madoff created unethical practice as its main source of revenue. It's already been fined by the SEC for not being honest to you about it. And now they're claiming to be on the side of the small investor and saying, trust me. But look, that's just the beginning. It gets a lot worse, right? So if the customer is the one paying you the money, who's the main customer for Robinhood? The answer, Citadel Securities. They are the largest market maker by far. They've cornered 40% of the payment for order flow market in the US. And in this graph, you can see how much the volumes of Citadel and other market makers have grown in 2020 alone. And in this graph, you can see Citadel paying Robinhood over $125 million in the first half of 2020. And have a listen to this, the Robinhood Premium. On average, firms like Citadel Securities pays Robinhood 17 cents per 100 shares. This is 19% above average for other internet brokers. And in the first quarter of 2020, this even went up to 24 cents per 100 shares. This is a 48% premium over the average order flow. This sort of premium is quite obviously to the detriment of retail investors. What makes Robinhood's order flow so much more valuable and attractive compared to that of, let's say, E-Trade? Two reasons could be mentioned. The first could be the one of informed traders. Orders from traders who simply know how to value a stock better provide less money to high frequency traders such as Citadel Securities. Since Robinhood is a trading platform aimed primarily at millennials and the average age of users being 26, significant finance experience and pricing methodologies are lacking. Politely, these investors are exactly what was defined earlier as noise and liquidity traders. Also called uninformed investors or more commonly, dumb money. Dumb money. So now we have a definition of Robinhood's product. That's you, that they're then selling on to companies like Citadel. Doesn't exactly leave you with a warm, fuzzy feeling, right? But now let's look at joining all the dots together because this is where it gets crazy. Let's go back to the early morning call to Robinhood from the NSCC. Now the NSCC is a National Securities Clearing Corporation. And the NSCC is a subsidiary of the DTCC, which is the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. The DTCC settles almost all US trades every year, close to $1.7 quadrillion worldwide. But it isn't a government organization or an impartial regulator. It's a corporation and is owned by the banks and brokers that make up the market, which includes Robin Hood. How they decided on the $3 billion number that Robin Hood needed to put up remains a mystery. Here's a piece from this Fortune article. Last week's drama between Robin Hood and the NSCC is likely to produce further scrutiny of the clearinghouse and its parent company, the DTCC. The DTCC serves to centralize the settlement operations of all stocks and bonds and is funded by banks and brokerages, including Robin Hood. 
While the DTCC's activities are an integral element of financial markets, the process by which it assesses risk is not transparent. In his conversation with Musk, Tenney described the process as opaque. Now, remember Citadel Securities, Robinhood's biggest customer, is part of the same group that bailed out Melvin Capital with $2.75 billion of emergency cash two days earlier. That sounds suspiciously close to $3 billion. And Citadel paid the money over to the hedge fund after it lost half its value from shorting GameStop. It's also the same Citadel Securities that posted a record $6.7 billion in revenue just a few days earlier. So if they could come up with close to $3 billion in cash for Melvin Capital, could they have not done the same for Robin Hood, one of their biggest suppliers? Of course they could. As it was, Robin Hood didn't even ask them for the money, but instead ended up raising $3.4 billion in debt financing from Silicon Valley VCs, which gives them the chance to convert their debt to equity at a 30% discount to Robin Hood's upcoming IPO price, which based on Robin Hood's shares in the secondary market is already being priced at around $40 billion, which is basically double the value that Robin Hood was at before the GameStop saga. So let that sink in for a moment. Robinhood tells you they're democratizing trading for the little guy. Then they sell your data in a Bernie Madoff created legal kickback to the same guys that then bail out the hedge fund. They get fined by the SEC for being dishonest. They get a call from their own company that tells them to pay $3 billion or stop letting the little guy buy GameStop. The company demanding the $3 billion is owned by the very same banks and brokers who are getting the bad press. And instead of then going to their biggest customer who just very publicly bailed out a hedge fund with close to exactly the same amount of money that they need, the $3 billion, they decide to halt trades instead of that and for much longer than any of the other brokers. And when they do raise the money, instead of getting it from Wall Street, they get it from Silicon Valley VCs who will help them get a high valuation and meanwhile, it's the retail investors who are getting a raw deal at every turn. Now, as a business owner myself, I know how tough it is to run a business and deal with unexpected crises. It's tough, but there's a really big difference between being honest and pretending to be honest. And definitely Robinhood had options that would have helped their investors if they had chosen them. Number one, they could have got emergency cash from Citadel just like Melvin Capital did. And if Citadel wouldn't help them out, their competitors would have for a bigger slice of Robinhood's orders. Number two, they could have redirected orders through Schwab or Ameritrade who were brokers that were still being able to trade those shares. They would have had to give up their own commissions, but at least they would have kept their investors happy. Or three, they could have secured cash on the day instead of two days later by giving the VCs a better deal. The VCs they got together were actually led by Ribbit Capital, who already was one of their investors. But instead of all of that, it looks to me like they decided to hold out for the best deal and in the process keep Wall Street on their side at the cost of the retail investors they say they're helping. And so they keep their reputation for being the best source of dumb money. Now, I'd rather build companies up than call them out, but there's a growing trend of big tech behaving badly, especially when they treat their users as a product instead of the customer. And if you feel the same as me, please do give this video a like so YouTube shows it to more people and do subscribe to hear more as things unfold. And in the meantime, this is just one opinion of one YouTuber and I'm happy to have my mind changed. And as a disclaimer, all of this is just about speculation from an individual. I'll leave the determination of wrongdoing to the upcoming congressional hearings and SEC investigations. But I do hope Robin Hood realizes the power of the crowd works both ways. And once they do go public themselves, small investors have the power to push up their share price, but also to push it down. So if there's one piece of advice I'd leave you with, it's vote with your trades. Retail investors today have the power to move markets like never before. Let's use it as a force for good. Thanks for watching. Happy trading. And I'll see you in the next video. I should take that as a no. You're not willing to pass on the proceeds of payment for order flow to your customers? When when uh, the other brokers dropped. No, I'm just talking about today, right now. Payment for order flow, Congresswoman, allows for commission-free trading. In the mm -hmm. context of trading commissions, um, it's a much larger source of revenue in the past than payment. Mr. Teneff, I, I apologize. And it's I I don't want to be rude. I just have limited time. Um, but if removing the revenues that you make from a payment for order flow uh, would cause the removal of free commissions, doesn't that mean that trading on Robinhood isn't actually free to begin with?